Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to look at properties. We're going to see what we can use them for in our projects. So what are properties and how do they work? They are simple little wrappers for accessors and mutators that would, you would use for your fields in your classes. So if you have a private field in a class, typically you would write a get method and a set method, right? The accessor and the mutator. And you would write these so you could actually handle some business logic in the set method. So if you were to assign a character name to an, an object, you could actually verify that the name wasn't over a certain length of characters or that it didn't contain any invalid words or characters that you didn't allow, any symbols or any uh, bad words, anything like that. So it's a way to handle verifying and validating data before you assign it to a field. It just kind of wraps that functionality up for you. It also makes it very easy to control if a field, or in this case, a property, is a read-write property, or if it is a read-only or a write-only property. Now, I'm not sure why this says private members. It would just be members in general. Uh, it can be defined as virtual, so you can override them in derived classes, which is kind of a big deal. I know that fields obviously are available in derived classes, but you can't override the functionality of what happens whenever you assign a value or you retrieve a value. And we'll talk a bit about that in this, but mostly it'll work the exact same way as the uh, inheritance did in the previous lesson. And lastly, but definitely not least, they can be defined and implemented in interfaces, which is kind of a big deal because it allows us to define properties that are required for any implementing class, which we'll get into in a later lesson. If you don't know what an interface is, great. We'll talk about them in an upcoming lesson. So as usual, I have an example here. I have a character class that I simply have a name field defined on, and then I have what I was calling the access and mutating methods for that field. So in order to assign a value to the name, we have to go through the set name method and it actually allows us to check for the length of the name and make sure it doesn't contain any bad words. In my case, camels. Can't have anything referencing a camel in this name. I don't like that. So if it does have that, I will write to the console and say there's an invalid something with this name. Please fix it. If not, we assign the value. Very straightforward, pretty simple approach to this. Then get name simply returns the value of the name. This is a pretty typical approach to using a getter and a setter method or again access or uh, mutate method one thing i want to do with this is i want to show you how you can simplify this process by using a property and how properties work in general so the properties that we write are actually going to interact with this private field that we have here as properties don't actually store any information they just interact with a private backing field and this is going to be your private backing field so the property is going to be publicly accessible, so it's going to be a public property, and it is going to be a string type because we're going to be interfacing with a string private backing field. And I'm going to call it name with a capital N. So it's going to match, capital N, I don't know why I said M. So it's going to match the name of the backing field, but with a capital letter to start it off. So we know that this is different but it is still the same, if that makes any sense. And then instead of ending the statement there with a semicolon, I'm going to add my curly braces and enter down. So it's going to look kind of like a body of a method, right? Without the parentheses for the parameters. And in here, I can define the access, the accessor and the mutator by defining a get and a set. Get and set. And you'll notice right off the bat, by typing that out, I have an error on the get. And that's because when you get a value, it expects a return type. The same way if I were to type up a method that had a return type of string, it would say, hey, this method requires a return for it to be valid. So let's go ahead and type out that return. So what I'm returning back is obviously going to be the private backing field called name, right? So all I have to do is return name. Now again, picture this as the get name method that we wrote a second ago. It's doing the same thing, just returning back the name value. But what is interesting about this is that I don't call a method to get the value back, or at least it doesn't, I don't explicitly call a method to get the value back. All I do 
is treat this like you would the, the uh, private member here by calling the property name. So if I were to write this out, I would say NPC dot name, and I would access the property, the public string name here. I would access that, and by trying to retrieve a value from it, it will call the get that we defined right here. So that will return the name value. Pretty cool, right? And so far, it doesn't seem too interesting, right? Because all I'm doing is using a get to get the exact same value that I could have gotten from a public field. But where it does get interesting is I can do anything with this value before I return it. So if I were to say name is equal to camel and then return the value, well, when I return the value, it's going to be camel. But all I did was call or reference the actual property. I didn't call a method or do any logic before that. Whatever logic I define in the body of the get happens before I return the value. So you can do some math in here. You can validate it again in some way if you wanted to, but we'll get to that here in a second. So the set, that's where it gets fun. In my uh, set name method a second ago, I had to make sure that it was not over 15 characters long because my game doesn't allow that or my software whatever I'm designing doesn't allow that. But the question is, what is the value that I'm checking? Because if I were to try to assign the value here and I were to say npc.name, how would I assign the value? You would assign it like you would a private field, right? Or a public field. I would say equal to, and then I would say uh, camel. I'm not sure what my obsession with camels is, but uh, they're <laughs> camel. So npc name is equal to camel. What I can actually do is use a contextual keyword. It's a token called value. Now this only works inside of this context, inside of set. And that's because value actually has the value that I'm trying to assign to the property. So what I can do, if I want to assign this to the private backing field, which I do, it's how this works. I'll say this.name is equal to value. And now that's going to, or I can just say name to simplify it. And that's going to assign the value that I tried to assign to the property up here. It's going to assign it to the private backing field. The same way if I had that set method. Pretty cool, but that doesn't do anything special again, right? So what I want to do is check to see if value dot length. And the reason this works is because value takes the type of the property. In this case, the property is a string. So value is a string type. So I say if value.length, that'll give me the number of characters in that string. If this was an int, it would be treated differently. It does not contain a definition for length. So if the length is greater than 15, else, so if it's not greater than 15, then we're good, go ahead and assign it. And I could also check to see if it doesn't contain an invalid string of some kind. So, so if we're not greater than 15, and we also, or we don't, also contain the word camel. If we pass that, then go ahead and assign the value. If not, we'll make sure the console is aware so we can see that's happening. So now to use this, I get rid of my set name method call there. Don't need that. And this is going to assign the value of camel. I'm going to make it match that just like that. So camel, camel. Now, obviously, if you had this working where you wanted to validate that it wasn't a bad word, you would have a list of bad words you would compare it to. But in my case, as an example, we're just making sure there's no camels getting through here. So let's run this, see what happens. Invalid character name, please fix. Character name is blank. Now, character name is blank is still happening because that doesn't have a condition. It just happens all the time. But the name is empty because we never assigned a value to it because it ended right here. So let's assign a valid name of Austin in the program first before I do that. So Austin. Character name is Austin, so there's no problem assigning it there. To continue the example, what if I only wanted to be able to assign a value to name, and in fact, name was only used internally in the character class for some reason, we'll say. I didn't have any reason to be able to get the value. I can remove the getter from that, and it will turn into purely a read only, or sorry, purely only a write property. So now when I try to actually retrieve the value, I get an error. But if I try to assign the value, we're all good. And I could reverse that by getting rid of the set. Now it is a read-only property, and I cannot assign to it just like that. I can assign to the private backing field from within the class, 
So if I have to initialize it with a value, I can do that, but I cannot from outside using the property or from within using the property either. And one thing I want to mention is there's never really a case for when you shouldn't be using a property. It just never makes sense. There, there may be a couple of edge cases that you would think, oh, the property doesn't make sense here. But 99% of the time, you're going to be wanting to use a property. If you have to access it and modify a, a field on your character, you want to use a property. If you don't have to do that and you're just defining a, a field on a character to use within the character, you still want to use a property so you're future-proof. There's no downside to using it, but you may be thinking, that's a lot to write out just to have a property defined just in case I want it in the future. Luckily, there's something we can do about that. So back to just our private member here, a private field. What if I wanted to use a property? I didn't have to have any of that logic in there. I didn't have to have the, uh, the, the character check or the, the contained check. What I can do, and I can do it very easily, is I can type in P-R-O-P, I can hit tab twice, and that'll make an auto-implemented property for me, which has a get and a set defined. There's no body to them, they're, they're just empty, but they are defined. And then I can actually say this is a string, and it is a name. Now, what is interesting about this is I don't have to have this explicitly defined backing field because the compiler will infer that that needs a backing field and create one for me. It also defines the get and the set for me as well. I just don't have access to them. They are there. I can't see them, but the compiler makes them and they can see them just fine. But I can use this in the exact same way without having the ability to define what happens before or after I set or get a value. And with this, I can take the set value and make it private, which is pretty cool. So I cannot set it outside of the scope it's defined in. I can even get rid of the set, make it a get only. And one thing to point out with a string like name here, the default value will be null. And that's because string is a reference type. So if I were to try to access this as it is, I would get a null reference error. And one way I can avoid that is I can initialize it with a default value myself without having to rely on the actual default value. So if I were to initialize this with a value, normally I would say is equal to something, right? That's how you would do that normally. Now before C sharp six, I believe it's six, auto implemented properties could not have an initialized value. So I couldn't say, is equal to something. You can actually initialize with a value just like this, which is also big news if you're using a list type, right? So if I were to say using a generic list and I have to initialize the list before I can actually use it, right? So a list string of names is equal to a new list string. I can actually initialize the auto implement property just like that, which is pretty cool. And that is pretty much it for this lesson. I know I mentioned the interface thing where we can actually implement properties in an interface, but since we don't really know what interfaces are yet, at least in the context of this course, I'm going to leave that for whenever we talk about interfaces and make that a big point in that lesson that you can actually implement them in interfaces where you cannot, in fact, implement fields, which is a big deal. So we're going to talk about that in the interface lesson. So if you're excited about that, I hope you will stick around and watch it. And that is all. If you would like to see this course continue, Maybe at a quicker rate, support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash game grind, slash go game grind, slash game grind. I'm not sure which it is. Link in the description. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.